the brother I'm going to introduce to you speaks the language tree. He was taught by a brother who worked in our country for 13 good years, spoke tree. Sheikh Faisal Bouadi was the teacher of the gentleman I'm going to bring on now, Sheikh Ishaq Nuama. Let me tell you a little about him. I first met that brother about 10 years ago in the Ghana Muslim community, and believe me, the 10 minutes I listened to, I have never recovered from it. And if there is anybody who can make us lighten the food we have eaten by lightening our pockets tonight, <laughs> that is the man to do it. Let me tell you a little about this brother before I bring him on. Sheikh Ishaq Ibrahim Noama is a product of the University of Ghana, King Saud University, Riyadh an institute of education, University of London. He is a lecturer at the Spiritan. He is a member of the governing board of Narcotics Control Board in Ghana and National Youth Council Ghana. He has traveled worldwide, attending conferences and presenting papers on education and Islam, leadership and the science of personal development in Asia, Europe, the USA and Africa. He is the regular guest of Islam in Focus, a social program on Metro TV Ghana. Without further ado, I would love to bring on and have you join me in welcome Sheikh Ishaq Nuama. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Bismillah, Ya Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nashkuruhu wa natawakkalu alayhi. Wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati amali. Man yahdihi la fala mudilla lah, wa man yudlil fala ntajida lahu hadiya murshida. وأصلي وأسلم على رسول الله محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه وبعض. My beloved brother in the chair, thanks for the kind words. I don't deserve them anyway. I thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى for bringing me this far. And I would like to thank Brother Khalid Rashad for his love from him and from his entire community. As he was giving an account about himself on his path towards Islam, it reminded me of my own roots. I came from a multi-religious roots. As I speak to you, the home of my mother, who passed away on the 8th of October, 2011. The house has a whole room filled with idols. When I go into that house, there are 12 rooms, one occupied by my mother, three occupied by Methodists, three by presbyters, another three by evangelical groups, and the whole room has been dedicated to occupation by idols. Whenever I go back to my root, one of the things I say to my Lord is that I thank you for taking me out of this filth. We are here today and I think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it my coming here possible through Brother Khalid. We met as far back as 2008 at a wedding ceremony in Accra. And he decided to visit me in Kumasi. He, together with three, two of his colleagues, spent a night with us in our home. And he said, I would like to have you in UK. My subject that I'm going to deal with is the beauty of Islam. 
But before I touch the substantive issues, I would like to say that every presentation, every solution you put on a table should be done within the confines of the conditions in which the people live. That is why I appreciate and I congratulate our teacher, Sheikh Abdul Hakim Quick, for his in-depth, reflective analysis of his presentation. I hope our Noor Center will take down the notes and work with the points he raised. A young man came to Ibn Abbas and asked him, if somebody causes the death of another person, will his sin be forgiven? He looked into his face and said, Lil Qatili Tawbah. And said that he may be forgiven. A day or two later, another person came and asked the same question, Hal Lil Qatili Tawbah. Ibn Abbas looked into his face and said, no, his sin will not be forgiven. An apparent contradiction. They asked Ibn Abbas, yesterday you said yes, today you are saying no. What explains that? Then Ibn Abbas said, in the case of the first person, he had already committed the act. So when I looked into his eyes, I saw signs of remorse and regret. And I had to give him hope. So I said, Allah may forgive you. In the case of the second one, he hadn't called. He had come to me for a license to kill. So when you're doing a presentation of this type, I need to bring on board the situation in which the ummah is. First and foremost, for the past 10 years, followers of this religion may either be tagged as barbaric or terrorists. Number two, if we are not aware, or if we are aware, we need to research further into this all important point. And that is, globalization has spilled into the global arena, the spirit of competition among ideas. Go to any of the social networks, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, name them. If you follow the trends in all these social networks, you will see a chain, a trend relating to competition, stiff competition among ideas. Why are they competing among themselves? They want to control you and me. The key question is, what is the share of the Muslim in that competition? Are we part of that competition at all? Number three, there has been a wrong conception, misconception among Muslims, that Dawah is the preserve of Sheikh Quick, Sheikh Sabr, and so on and so forth. But upon deep reflection on the text in Surah to Yusuf towards the end, Allah says, Kul hadhi sabili, adur ilallahi ala basira, ana wa mani tabani. The say, this is my way. I invite all to the way of Allah through spiritual light. And some scholars interpret to mean evidence. I, the Prophet, and whoever follows me. So Muslim theologians are of the view that every Muslim, in some sense, is a dayah. Point number four. As we read through the Quran, in the seerah of the Prophet, we come across a large chunk of beauty that seems to be unique and associated with this religion. 
Because, but because we have not, I don't want to use the word aggressive, but we have not been conscious enough to do the task of dawah. These ideas are locked up. And I can assure you, in the language of information technology today, it, no matter how intelligent you are, and no matter how beautiful your ideas are, if you don't tell your story, somebody else will be telling your story and paint you black. Even if you are a diamond, the person will describe you as a rock. Consequently, our story should be told by us. And we have to do it with all the resources at our disposal. Otherwise, if Islam carries with it manifestations of beauty, I'm just going to highlight on only two or three. The first unique thing about this book, about this deed, is Al-Quran itself. In the writings of Dr. Abdullah Darraz, a scholar in the area of Tawheed, he did his PhD on the morals of the Quran in Sorbonne University. He has this wonderful book, An Nabaul Azim. In that book, Dr. Darraz states that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed two names of the Quran to be popular. The names are Al-Quran and Al-Kitab. These two names are popular, according to him, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used two key methods to protect the book. Al-Quran, most scholars give the root from Qara'a yaqra'u Qur'anan aw Qura'atan. That is, it comes from the root of reading. So the Quran is protected through recitation, reading, and memorization. And it is called Al-Kitab because Al-Kitab is something that has been written down. And the Quran was the first revelation revealed to a prophet, and it was written down during the time of the prophet. All the prophets that came before the Prophet Sallallahu they delivered, and their people had to rely on oral accounts to put them down. But in the case of the Prophet Sallallahu any time revelation came to him, he would invite his secretaries, Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan, Zayd bin Thabit, Ubay bin Ka'b, Ali bin Abi Sufyan, Ali bin Abi Talib. Then he said, Oktubuha, write them down, put them down on any available object. To the extent that the time of his death, the Quran, Tawfiqiyan, had been written down on different objects from Surah Al Fatiha to Surah Al Nas. If this is not a miracle, for more than 1,400 years, this book has been preserved because it is a promise from the Creator to do that. Hear him well in Surah Al Hijr. Inna nahnu. Verily, we have brought down this message and we will protect it. The we here is not we of numbers. It's we of respect and majesty. Arabic is a Semitic language and it has two types of plural. Plural of numbers and plural of respect and majesty. In this case, it is plural of respect and majesty. The Quran performs transformational miracles. You all know the story of Omar ibn Khattab, how he became a Muslim. After listening to verses from the Quran, from the sister, his heart changed. Atufail ad dawsi who was a great literary scholar among his tribe, was entering Mecca, and Quraysh had sent ambassadors to the, all the entry points and telling people to walk away from the Prophet Sallallahu but Tufel said, I'm an intelligent person. I understand Arabic language very well. He had earlier put two cutting woods into his ears. But when he came close to the prophet and started hearing some words, wonderful words, he said, let me remove, remove one cutting and then so that I could listen to him well. After listening and reflecting upon the few words he had heard, 
He said, no, it looks like I'm hearing some song. I don't know. Well, let me remove the other one. He removed the other one, and he heard the words very well, clearly. He said, this couldn't have been written by a human being. And straight away, he followed the prophet to his house. And he asked the prophet, is it because of this? They are treating you like this. Inni ashhad la ilaha illallah wa annaka rasulullah. Today, this book continues to astound people about its contents. Until 1920, scholars were not even aware that the sky and the earth were one mass. But the Quran had earlier mentioned something about the Big Bang. In physics, they call it the Big Bang, and they use the word explosion. We don't call it explosion. That's a divine design. But if even you go to the root of the word explosion, if a dynamite is put into this building, an explosion will occur. But we all know that the debris will go different directions. You won't see order after the explosion. But in the case of the account, in the Quran, chapter 21, verse 30, kanata Having the disbelievers seen that the sky and the earth were one mass and we broke them asunder, broke them into two. And we have made water a source of sustenance for mankind. This one and other scientific facts in the great book compelled Morris Bokal to state in his book, the Bible, the Quran and science, that the above hypothesis makes the assertion that Muhammad was the author of the Quran untenable and unacceptable. If Muslims have such a wonderful, beautiful thing, and they don't project it, they don't live by it, they have deceived themselves and they have cheated themselves. The Sahaba. We name rightly and tag rightly, describe rightly by Said Qutb as the Quranic generation. The generation of the Holy Quran. According to Ibn Mas'ud, any time they heard a message from the Prophet, 10 verses at a time, for example, they will make sure they had memorized the 10 verses and lived consistently by those verses. So Said Qutb asked a question in his book, Ma'alim Futtariq, Milestone, that why were they able to commit their lives to the Almighty? Indeed, a school of thought is of the view that because they came from Jahiliya and they saw the light and they saw the huge, the huge disparity between where they were and where they are and they want to break away from the past. That is why they did that. And we also have to do the same because when you look at the environment in which we live today, an environment filled with sexual promiscuity, an environment filled with filth of all kinds, then we have to protect ourselves and our children. And without a physical and monumental point of convergence, like a neuro center, our children will be parasites on other societies. Finally, this is a unique religion. And our brother, Sheikh Sabr, the first speaker, touched on the unity of Muslims. Ibn Khaldun, in his book, Muqaddimat Ibn Khaldun, translated by Oxford University as philosophy of history, mentions five elements of social integration. He mentions color, that brings bringing people together. He mentions language. He mentions tribe. He mentions land. 
He mentions customs. Then he mentions faith that is Tawheed. That it is only Tawheed that can bring people of different languages together, people of different color, people who belong to different lands. So here in this hall, we have the United States of Muslims. And if we have such a great gift, what is left is to trans transform the gift to something that we can all be proud of. I thank you all for the attention. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.